<laughs> begin with a word of prayer, mostly to annoy those who don't like me praying at the start of videos. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you that you love people even when they don't like to, to uh, hear you being prayed to. And I just thank you for these students. Pray that you just help us understand topology a little bit better as we read this book this semester. Lord, you know I pray. Amen. So we are using Marco Manetti's topology, and so I'm hoping to follow it somewhat closely. That said, I'm not going to attempt that today because, I mean, I don't know, the first chapter is really interesting, but you guys haven't had a chance to read it yet, and you really should just read the first chapter. It's, it's really nice. Um, overview kind of just what topology is and some of the problems it, it, it addresses. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is go a little bit different direction and just get straight to, um, and the second chapter is on sets, and I don't really have anything to add to the book there much either, so I think I'm going to let you read that. I think we're just going to dive straight into what is a topology, all right, so we'll just get straight to the, straight to the meat of it, you know, what is, what is a topology? I know I'm diverging from my course planner, which you guys follow so intently. Um, let's see here. Actually, it, this is Moncrie's, which is, you know, classic. And uh, he's got about 70 pages at the start of it, which is foundations of stuff like, you know, um, things about sets and images, and maybe we'll come back to some of that as we need to. Um, you know, well-ordering, axiom of choice, and all this good stuff, and cardinality. You guys seen some of that in Matt 200? we talk about cardinality in Matthew 100? The number of elements in set. Number of elements in set, yeah. And uh, what about the, um, oh, what's it called? Cantor, sometimes it's called Cantor's theorem. That the uh, cardinality of the power set is, is larger than the cardinality of the, um, the set itself, right? Uh, if you've seen, okay, so you've seen those things before, that's good. Um, so, you know, what is a topology? Let me just get to it. Okay. So, the definition. Um, a topology on a set, let's call it X. All right. Um, is something like, I'm trying to use a script T here, which is a subset of the power set of X. So, do you guys know what the power set of X is? It's a set of all subsets of X. Are you good on that? Also, Jess? I mean, yeah, no, no. I vaguely remember that from Euclid D. Okay, so yeah, this is, this is just the set of all subsets, all right? So, the topology is some, um, and, and it also includes the empty set, right? So. The topology is some some subset of the power set. All right. So a topology is itself a collection of subsets of X, and it has the following properties. So it's, again, it's the definition taken from Moncrie's. Um, I haven't had a chance to carefully read the topology chapter yet in in uh, Manetti's book yet. But I will. Um, okay. So anyway, getting to the point. The, the, first of all. The empty set and the whole set are in the topology once more. Right. Two, um, the union of elements in the topology, so the uh, union of um, union of sets in T. Um, is once more in T. Uh, you could say, in other words, um, well, I'll put the other words here in a second. Let me just get this out of my system. Three, <coughs> the intersection of a finite subcollection of T is again in T. The intersection. Of a finite subcollection of T is again in T. All right. Okay. And um, hmm. <laughs> it's 
funny. Oh, there it is. I was just I was wondering when he when he finally says that the things in T are open sets. But I'm gonna say it now. So we say um, you an element of the topology is an open set. All right. So what that means then, of course, is this axiom one really just says the empty set and the whole set are open, right? Um, two says what? It says the union over, say, alpha in lambda, uh, let's say, um, I'll say, uh, try not to use u again, I'll say v, v sub alpha um, are an element um, of the topology, man, I can't do this stupid, the topology again, where um, <clears throat> the alpha is an element of the topology for each alpha in lambda. Now, this idea here, what I'm trying to get across to you is, it, why don't you just write, say, i equals 1 to infinity of the union? Right? Why don't you just write a union, say, just index it, right? Well, the thing is, this notion of union is more general than that. This index set could be, could be like a real index, for example. Alpha could be a real number. You know, the, the index set could be the set of reals or something else, <coughs> even bigger. So, um, you know, the topology has to be closed under arbitrary unions. Okay. And then <clears throat> the third, the third thing here, is finite intersections. So if you know, <coughs> let's say v v sub i is an element of tau for i in um, n sub n then the intersection over n sub n of vi is once more an element of tau. There is one important thing I did notice in this book that I think should be pointed out. I um, feel like this can't wait. It's, uh, it's very important. It's on page 24. Under induction and completeness, you might notice that um, We denote n equal to one, two. Very <laughs> 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 controversial stance. So, you know, Dr. Skimbord has a sudden real analysis that he prefers defining it with zero, but our book I'm uses... just saying you might think twice before you travel to Italy. So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've seen other like books, though, like math encyclopedias. I was looking at for set theory when I, when I was doing 250. Yeah. And it only includes zero when it specifically has a zero next to the end. Whether it's in, like, the top, like, after right. it or the bottom after it. It varies from book to book. But this, this n sub zero is what he uses for um, Nathan's natural numbers. It's not really fair to single him out. You can find rather epic battles about which is which on like the stack exchange and stuff. I think, <laughs> be like, I think the French generally zero. Oh, the French. So, yeah. That's why we shouldn't do it. They didn't win they didn't win the war, why should they get to decide the notation? More importantly, a theoretical computer scientist use zero. Oh theoretical you always oh, theoretical. start theoretical you computer scientist. You always start counting with zero. Oh, yeah, theoretical. No, like, if you ask a kid, like, start counting, they go one, two, three, four, <laughs> then it goes zero, one, two, three, four. <laughs> counting starts at conception. <laughs> Theorem zero. <laughs> zero. Okay, this, this exists. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I, I don't know. You get into these, like, discussions, like, oh, the history of, like, what's the earliest math? Well, counting of the Neanderthals, or of, like... Um, let's see here. Um, okay, so that's the topology. Now, I mean, obviously, the I mean, okay, so you know, anybody can make a definition, say it. That, that's easy, right? Okay, that's not easy. Making the definition is actually very difficult. It, making it in such a way that it's meaningful. I mean, this is the result of 
you know, centuries of mathematics. I, I think this goes back to, let's see, what is, what is, I'm trying to think here. Well, Moncrie says that um, it was attempted by Frisch, Hausdorff, and others, but this one was, when was it? Oh, no, can't bother to tell me when this one was from. Let's see if more, okay. this guy was any better. I mean, the obvious question is why? Why make this definition, right? Why? No, he doesn't tell me either. No, it's very annoying. Well, there's a question you can ask. Who first stated this definition clearly? Uh, anyway, I guess that's a question for Math 400. Well, probably not. But, um... <clears throat> Ultimately, the um, you know merit of this definition will be seen in the fact that it reproduces all of our familiar metrical properties. It includes those, and it does so much more. Um, the generality of this notion of open set is it's you know it's hard to uh, to downplay. Now, any questions about the definition? Let's try to look at some examples, maybe. Yeah. So I'm assuming that like. The integer sub n is just n, all the integers starting at integer n. Oh, I'm sorry. This is just a stupid notation. I'm just trying to say i equals 1 to n. That's all. Just, it's a finite, it's a finite intersection. It's That's all I was trying to write. Silence, woman. Let's see here. Um, what an intersection of an infinite. I was insulting an electronic woman, for those of you who don't know. Yes. What an intersection <laughs> of an infinite. <laughs> like, not like the three, why does that have to be finite? It has to be finite. Now, there's a way of, um, yeah, that's a, well, hmm. All right, let's go back to metric spaces for a second, all right? There's already a claim to words like open back there, right? Um, so in the metric space context, you've got what? You've got a set X. You've got some distance function, right? And you look at open balls, like um, say b sub epsilon centered at x naught. That would be what? That would be x in in x such that what? The distance from x naught to x is what? Less than epsilon, right? Epsilon ball centered at x naught. And then we'll say, you know, u a subset of x is what is open if and only if um, if each um, u and u is interior, right? And what does that mean? Um, there exists an epsilon ball. Right, there exists some epsilon greater than zero, such that what? Right. Subset of x. Subset of u. Right. I mean, it's interior to right. the subset u. So we're talking about, you know, that that's what it means for a set to be open in the in the metric space, right? And um, and we also said that I'm trying to think here. Um, okay, so agree. That's just a brief reminder. Now look at this. Look at this here, here. So one of the simplest metric spaces you can think about, as you guys are thinking about in your real analysis course right now, in some detail, the real line. Here's the number zero. Here's some open sets. Um, let's say like this. So here's your open set. I mean, an open interval. You can prove open intervals are open sets, right? <clears throat> you pick the midpoint and, <laughs> you know, take the diameter, the radius of the set, let's say. There's your epsilon. There's, all right. It, I mean, well, I don't know. You be, yeah, stupid. I mean, we can be picky, all right? So if you pick a point, and then you can put a little open ball in there like that. And you can do that at each point. You got enough TIE fighters to cover the whole thing. And um, so it's good. Are mathematicians Sith? 
We only deal in absolutes. <laughs> Sorry. I, think I guess the probability theorists are Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that. I'm not sure that mathematicians only deal in absolutes, though. I think there's some kind of very fuzzy questions about set theory. I think all of the rest of the world would claim that mathematicians are sets. Yeah. But for other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like that. For the reasons my calculus two sections are currently experiencing. All right now. So we can agree that an open interval is an open set, right? And then what happens if you look at the intersection, say n equals 1 to infinity of, let me call this set v sub n, of v sub n, what is it? Oh, it's just going to be easier. Where is it? Oh, I guess. Oh. Oh, I guess it's the, I guess it's the empty set, isn't it? Yeah, maybe that's not the example I wanted. Oh, I'm an idiot. How about this? That's not the example I'm looking for. Here's what I want. How about this? Minus one. Yeah, one over n to minus one over n. Exactly. Now this one, if you take, you can say that that's uh, w, w sub n. You take the intersection, n equals one to infinity of w sub n. It's the it's the singleton. It's just. You see, as it squeezes down, the only point which is common to all of these symmetric intervals about the origin is is, the, is, is just that point. So this this would be equal to that, right? And and that is not an open that is not an open set. You can prove that zero is not interior. You pick any epsilon and look at a ball around zero. You have points other than zero by the completeness. I mean, that's it. I mean, to really prove that is gets into the structure of the real numbers. But anyway, you, you can see it's true. So that's why we can't have, that's why we should not assume infinite intersections. But if you search your heart, you will see that um, arbitrary unions of open sets are, in fact, again, open. And just start trying to think about that. It, it will, if you union together things that are made of interior points only, you're still going to just have, you know, fuzzy edges when you join things with fuzzy fuzzy edges. Just thinking back, sort of geometrically for a second here. Oh, so there's an example of a topology. If you have a space together with a metric d, um, and I guess I haven't defined that very carefully. What makes d a metric? We talked about it in advanced calculus, right? But um, what what makes d a metric? We need what? Positive definite. Oh man, what is this? He's brandling the board again. I didn't wash my hands. Get put my oh, shirt. I should wipe the board with my shirt. That would save me so much time. Why am I not doing that? Shirt. I mean, maybe I should start using my shirt to wipe the board. So you've always been using your shirt. <laughs> I was. Oh no 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 no! But, but this shirt. Oh. Uh, <laughs> this one. <laughs> yeah. I always have this one. At least Spreno can like wash his hands and make it look like he's not dirty. But that See, I just gotta tuck my hand in there and just go. <laughs> After a while, it'll just look dark. It'll be. I think I have. You just do it with different parts of your shirt. I haven't reached out to Malaysia. Like so. colored. <laughs> Everyone just be like. <laughs> so the distance function is symmetric, right? The distance from x to y is distance from y to x. You guys just told me it is positive definite. So distance from x to x is greater than zero. Uh, oh. Oh no. Different. The distance <laughs> from x to y is zero. This distance from x to y. Is, is greater than or equal to zero. And zero. If right. Y. This is from x to x is equal to zero <coughs> if it, you know. What else? Oh, and then the, the what? The, Triangle inequality? Yeah, so x, the distance from x to y plus the distance from y to x, y to z is what? It's greater than the distance from x to z. Yeah. 
And of course, we, we are well aware that these things are satisfied in Rn if we just say d um, from x to y is equal to the square root of <coughs> um, y minus x dotted with, say, y minus x, if you like. Whatever is your favorite formula. But it's, it's the norm of the vector that connects y and x, right? That's, that's the metric. But more abstractly, if you have a set, and it has, these, it has a distance function, right? Something that satisfies these three things, then it's called a metric space. And you can, um, you know, you can say that a set, you can define an open set in the metric space um, to mean that uh, U a subset of X is open if each point is interior, right? Then what, what would we need to do if we, if we make that our definition, what we're saying is that, um, I guess the question is, does that form a topology? Like, what is the, um, I feel like I'm, there's some fine print here I'm missing. I mean, the only, the open sets in the metric space, right, they're not just open balls, right? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't say that the open set were open balls, I said that they were they were, they were sets for which every, every point was interior. So, yeah, so then, then what we'll say is the, the metric topology then is the collection of all open sets as defined here in terms of the metric. Then the question is, is the metric topology a topology? I mean, just because I call something a topology it doesn't make it so. What do we have to check then in order to see that the metric topology? So again, just to be t uh, equal to, let's say, um, u subset of x such that u is metrically open. I'll just call that metrically open to give a emphasis on the notion. I have to check all three of those. Right. Is the empty set open in the metric sense? <laughs> it doesn't have it's trivially. <laughs> there's, there's nothing to check. <laughs> so yeah, it's trivially so. Yep. Okay, check. Is the whole set open? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Again. Considering uh, that every every open ball only has points in X. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. This is kind of <laughs> all right. So axiom one, we're good to go. Is the union of <clears throat> is the union of open balls an open ball? Yes. Yes, that seems like a homework problem some mean professor might have assigned you at some point. I think I just did it for two, but if, if you understand the proof for two, I'm fine. Let's do it. Let's see here. Let uh, u alpha. Um, <coughs> be open in X um, for each alpha in some index at lambda. Right. So suppose X is an element of the union over alpha in lambda of U sub alpha. Then what does that mean? What does it? What does a union mean? It means that that point x, right? There has there has to exist some alpha naught, let's say, in lambda, such that right. So there exists alpha naught in lambda, such that uh, x is an element of u alpha naught. But then what does that say? But u alpha naught's an open set, right? Therefore. There exists, say, epsilon greater than zero, such that B epsilon um, of X is a subset of U alpha naught. Hence, and here's the thing I skipped over today. I mean, and, and perhaps I should return to it, but I, I'm more inclined to just assign you some homework from it. <laughs> um, Nathan's like, you have no claim to me. <laughs> I'm outside your grasp. Let's see here. But Nathan.
and as a Jedi, he doesn't completely understand the ways of the Sith. No, I, I don't think you're you're not a Jedi. No, definitely not. No, no, no. Well, for one thing, uh, I'm into intuitionistic logic, Intuit. which rejects the law of the excluded middle. So. Yeah. Hmm. Human attachment is also something for the Jedi, so. <laughs> uh, um, you agree, any subset, any set in the Union is a subset of the Union, of course. So then this, this is an Epsilon ball inside the Union. Therefore, an arbitrary point in the Union is interior. Therefore, you... Therefore, this infinite union, possibly infinite union, is open. So the arbitrary union of open sets in the metric sense is once more open. Sweet. Oh, I'm sorry. I try not to say that. Um, I don't think I have the cultural experience to make that, that saying. It's not, uh, it's not for me to say that. Let's see here. Oh. Yeah, I think the uh, the finite intersection is a little bit more of a drag. Use induction, <clears throat> right? Hmm. Induction for the finite intersection. That's for an arbitrary finite intersection. So. Yeah. That might work. I don't know. I mean, I know for two sets, right? I choose the I choose the minimum of the you know I look at um, I choose something in the intersection choose the min of the distance of the to uh, yeah, I'm the trying two to, sides yeah I'm trying to think of how, I mean this is an arbitrary metric space right this isn't just Rn so. Well, I guess the uh, minimum of all possible distances to the boundary of either set. Or something but like that. But that's not, I don't have distance to the boundary as something I've defined here. What is the boundary? Well, couldn't you define the boundary? I mean, you could, but we haven't. raises other questions like the existence of the boundary. Hmm. Mm. I'm not against what you're saying, I just, I, I don't... I like your induction idea, so we're trying to show the intersection i equals 1 to n of, let's say, um, u sub i is what is open given U sub i are metrically open. Right. And, and I mean, of course, open in metric sense. Now, you're like, i equals 1, we're done. <laughs> okay, n equals 1, all right, fine, I, I see that. All right, so then you say, I'm going to say, suppose inductively. Intersection i equals one to n minus one. Um, oh, maybe n. Yeah, duh. Of use of i. How about n minus seven? Let's start at seven. N minus seven. <laughs> and it's equivalent. Show n minus seven implies n minus six. <laughs> <laughs> All n minus six. Yeah, I see. I, I'm, I'm being made fun of. I'll go on here. Um, Joe still lives in this country. Joe. <laughs> Joe the, the stain of Joe lives on. Let's hear. Um, I equals one to n. The use of i is open. Then what I need to look at? I need to look at. Uh, given that these are open sets, of course, I should think about how about the intersection. I equals one to n plus one of u sub i. Now this, I'm assuming that that would be open for any selection of n. I really should assume it's 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 open for any selection of n sets, n open sets in the metric topology, right? And then 
So if I look at n plus 1, then of course I can break that intersection into two. I mean, this is a property of intersections, which again is one of those things that we have skipped over. Maybe I should go back to. But then again, I feel like there's snow coming. I have a strong suspicion that we won't be able to meet Friday. It's like a handout or something. That's okay, because I have, I have already ignored the course plan. I remember way ahead now. What's that? <laughs> Is there like a handout you can give us on this? Like a, I remember unions a lot from 250, but I, I don't. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm still really weak on like. Oh, I definitely, I definitely know what you can read besides if, if um, Menetti is not, you know, complete enough. Is it there's, there, there's like a solid 70 pages in Moncrie's. It's pretty accessible. Um, Where is it in uh, Menetti's? He's got a, ch his, it's the chapter, it's chapter two, I think, on sets. Oh, okay. I glanced over one, but I didn't, I didn't even look at two yet. I, I, I think, um, I have a strong suspicion that Moncrie's is a little bit better to read on this because he's got like, just more pages. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's one of the strengths <coughs> of Moncrie's books. <laughs> but I, I do like, there's something about Menetti that, I, that, drew, that drew me to it, so I'm not going to stick with it. But, okay, at least there's something. Although I'm not sticking with it. But, um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, allegedly, Bailu has mailed me my topology notes, so soon those will be here and I can share with you what I actually know and that'll be better. Um, okay, so there we have to show <laughs> what then? We, we want to pick x. x is an element of here, right? So, <clears throat> I'd like to show that that's an interior point. So if x is in the intersection, what does that mean? x is an element of un plus 1, and x is an element of the intersection, i equals 1 to n of u sub i. Hey, what I'll try to do, Jess, is I'll try to talk to my brother <clears throat> and find out what homeworks he assigned his topology course last year mm -hmm. on the set theory stuff, because mm -hmm. he usually has a pretty good sense of assigning homeworks that aren't overly onerous, but okay. really get to the heart of things. And, I mean, he used Moncrief, but for this basic stuff, it's, you know... Yeah, because I, I don't feel as confident about it, but, you know, I just... Well, I mean, either. I mean, you asked me about a lot of things about arbitrary unions and intersections of sets. Off the top of my head, I'd have to look at a book. I mean, I yeah. yeah. I remember a lot about cardinality, like unions, but not mm -hmm. much better section. Uh, basically, the point is the definition, if it's in the union, that means it has to be in one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At, at least one. But if it's in the intersection, it has to be in every single stupid one of them. Yeah. Or in this case, two of them. But now, <clears throat> the induction hypothesis says what? That's okay. Yeah, this, this, so that implies then that there exists epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 such that what? Um, B epsilon 1 of x is a subset of un plus 1, and B epsilon 2 of x, which is a subset of the in intersection i equals 1 to n of u sub i. There I'm using the, um, the induction hypothesis. So now I would need to show that there is some epsilon 3, right? So, I mean, here's kind of a picture of what's going on. Oops. <laughs> Bad. Let me try that again. So here's this infinite union. It's come down to, not infinite, finite union. It's come down to this, let's say. And then here's the n plus 1 one, right? So we're looking here. Still a bad picture. Let me not try to illustrate the intersection of the n. All right, so here's the n one, here's the other one. Here's x, right? We've got like, something like that. I mean, they're both centered on x, right? So there's epsilon one, epsilon two. Might wanna zoom in on that. Even, even zooming in on it, <laughs> oh, where's the zoom at? Is it on top? Yeah, it's on top. That was 
supposed to be an epsilon two. John Denver from the Muppets. What? I need to stop. Okay, it's math, math, math. Um, so I think we. So my, just pick the least here. Yeah, I think we picked the minimum. Let epsilon epsilon three equal to the minimum of epsilon one and epsilon two. And my my suspicion is then we can show that. Um, I was distressed. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> you say that that would, that should imply what? That the ball of epsilon three would be a subset of both of those. Right. Which are in turn a subset. Epsilon one is a subset of the and epsilon, you know. Right, therefore B epsilon three is a, is a subset of both un plus one and the intersection from one to n. Consequently, that's an open set around x in the intersection of the n plus one sets. Consequently, the n plus one fold intersection is open. So the only thing we haven't proved is uh, this little thing I wrote in red. I'm feeling lazy. Homework. <laughs> If you do want to join the class, then you need to tell me so I can write the thing that talks about the awesomeness of Nathan so they'll let you take the class. So, <clears throat> so we can give you all my commitment about our video. Here, right, do you have the, uh, <laughs> let me look up how much tuition is. <laughs> how much? <laughs> how much is, oh, you're already at 18? Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. I don't want to put that on you. PDFs cost so much. Let's see here. Um, <laughs> um, let's see here. Okay, so I think I have at least done justice today to showing you that the metric topology is in fact a topology. And that's important because that is probably the most important um, example, class of examples really of a topology is the metric topology, right? Um, some undergraduate topology courses would really do not, almost nothing but study metric topology. Now, I would do that with you guys, too, if I hadn't already talked about topology and complex analysis and advanced calculus. I, talk, I do talk about the metric topology there a fair amount. Well, not too much. Either. But <clears throat> there's, there's more. Um, another topology, here's a very greedy one, uh, how about this, let x be a set and define I got some of that stuff. There's, yeah. yeah. Just a second. <sighs> this kind of an accumulation of the uh, spray. The spray up here, man. Okay. How about this? I'll leave it open. How about this? What if we look at the power set of X? Ah! I need to get one of those cat burglar tools and cut some circles in here. <laughs> Maybe I could pop one of these ceiling tiles out and get like a fan. Get ceiling tile dust everywhere, it would make worse. Oh, uh, yeah, there's that. Ah, true. Okay, so how about this? What about the power set? Power set's a subset of the power set. It's a collection of sets. So check the axioms. Is the empty set and the whole set and the power set? Yeah. Check. <laughs> is the arbitrary union of subsets of a set once more a subset of a set? Yeah. Check. <laughs> yeah. 
is the finite intersection of subset of set. Again, a subset of a set. Check. <laughs> Power set's very greedy. In fact, this is the uh, topology. This has a name. I think it's called the dis discrete topology by Munkries. Tell you a second here. I think it is. I'm correct. It is on page 77 of the red Munkries. Let's see here. Mm. Yeah. Now, on the complete opposite side of the spectrum, so this is called the discrete topology. I've always disagreed with the, uh, the naming of these. It seems backwards to me. And then let um, x be a set, all right? And let the topology be the empty set and the whole set. Does this satisfy the axioms of a topology? Well, it's made to order for number one. <laughs> um, yeah. If you number union two. the empty set with x, you get back x again. Yeah. So that's in there. If you intersect the empty set with x again, you get the empty set. Yeah. Now this is what's called the indiscrete topology. <laughs> I always thought, this one seems more indiscreet to me. I like that one better. <laughs> it sounds broader. Yeah. But anyway, that's, that's the standard term. Now, the, uh, the discrete topology is just kind of ridiculous. It says absolutely every possible opens, every, every possible subset is open. It's very, you know, it's uh, boring. Yeah, boring. Yeah, I think boring might be a word. In some sense, it's also at the at the uh, sort of the top of all possible topologies or something. On a given set, you could have different um, different topologies. Uh, let's see here. Oh, the finite complement topology. Oh, I'm not sure. I'll do that one next. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you that there's you can you can even define a topology on a finite set. Um, let X be. Um, the set A, B, C, where A, B, and C are distinct elements. Um, and uh, so you could, um, <coughs> let's see if I can, he's got pictures of different topologies. I'll just try to do one. How about this? Topology is the empty set, and how about the set just containing A and the whole set. Does that form a topology? Let's see. If you take the union of those things, union of the empty set with either one of these is just one of these again, right? The union of A and X is again X. Right. The intersection of the empty set in A is just the empty set. Intersection of empty set in X is just the empty set. Intersection of X and A is A again. You're done. That's a topology. Here's a here's a picture of the other ones. You can I'll let you guys look at it for a second. Examples. Um, so these are just alternate definitions of what a topology is, or is it just like examples? Yeah. So um, for a given you know, for a given set, there could be different um, you know different topologies. I don't. This 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 actually is a good example in that in that regard because um, you know this is a topology, but you know what? 
this would also be a topology on this set. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And if I just put C there, yeah. there are ways of putting more more than this, like in that picture. So there there's there's, you know, in that thing we're just looking at, if we trust Moncrease, he's got example of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different topologies possible in this three point set. Okay. Generally speaking, there are infinitely many different possible topologies for, like, for an infinite set. I think you could have the, the, the choices are. I, I've never tried to think about enumerating them. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't. I'm not sure that that would be a thing you could do. So, so the number of topologies is just the value of the power set. Hmm. No. But no. Yeah. it's so. it's involving choosing things from the power set. So how many possible choices are there of subsets of the, uh, how many how many possible choices are there of things from the power set such that those things satisfy it at the same time these three axioms? Okay. Ugh. Oh yeah, you, know, you described it in the beginning. So Ooh, it's bad. It's bad. I imagine it'd be uncountably infinite though if it was on just the natural numbers, for example. Right. I I, I since it's going to be arbitrary choices from the power set. What have I done? Oh, I yeah, I, I think it's it's very big. Now, the um, no, okay. So, in complex analysis or in, in advanced calculus, we've looked at R n, we've looked at a metric topology, right? And then one of the things I mentioned to you guys is like it doesn't really matter if you build the open sets from the Euclidean notion of distance, or from for say to say the one norm. Or the the two norm two norms the Euclidean the three norm four norm all these different or even the sup norm, they all give you um, the same topology because basically they say your your open sets are either disks or they're like di diamonds or they're squares or they're kind of blown out circle you know blown out diamonds that eventually become circles I mean it's, it's or circles that get more you've seen the picture the circle becomes a square but the point is all of those different things with fuzzy edges. If those are like the basic open sets, they still re they still give rise to the same open sets in Rn. So, the metric topology and all those other ones that are in induced from norms, those are the same same topology on Rn. However, there are other topologies that you can put on Rn than that. Um, so here's here's an example. We'll see if we can understand it. Um, this is his example, 3.3. He calls it the upper topology. The upper topology on R, what's he say? It's defined as the one having, it, it has, now he uses his French notation. <laughs> uh, he's, he drives me nuts, he's, he's got, Sorry, I can't do it, Daniel. I'm just not French enough for that. Um, so I'm going to convert that. Take me way back. I'm going <laughs> to take you back to your high school days. Yeah. Uh oh, you're not going to. You're not going to be like a ninja or something now. Let's see here. That's it. My, my Daniel, my son. He just like he insists on taking off his shirt and like running around the house and like, yeah, and like. He attacks it like there's not a day I don't go home and get like really hit in the stomach hard. It's he's getting too big for it. It's it's really getting to be <laughs> like no, <laughs> stop. You just gotta start working out. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you train yourself to fight back. <laughs> like, I'm like Paul, why why do your hands hurt? He's like, well, I was I was punching the post. I'm like, why are you why are you punching the post? It's like I'm trying to harden up my hands. Like, build your resistance to large caliber what? bullets by shooting yourself with smaller caliber bullets. Is you heard that? This this karate you're learning, I don't know. It's. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, it was this uh, strange Paul or whatever. It is cra it's crazy. It's Paul? Of course, the crazy Paul. Yes. Uh, working on hardening his fists as to hit the children. <laughs> I mean, he did. He, okay, fine. He was a karate instructor. They, they asked for it. <laughs> but um, 
wonder if he's he's a Sith. <laughs> yeah, I, I well, that's a good. You know, I will have to. You know what? After I'm done out of my home, I will call him up and ask him if he considers himself a Jedi or a Sith. Let's see here. We'll find out. Um, where are we? So this one is defined as having this. Um, and here's the here's the catch with a an element of R union with infinity. So you join the point at infinity, positive infinity, um, as non 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 empty open sets. I don't think that's I haven't said that quite correctly yet. He's using some slick notation. Topology on R. So when he's infinity's not in the set, okay, we're not talking about like the really long line or something where you would join infinity and other stuff. That's that's a different animal. I think he's just trying to say that the open sets are either this or the whole thing minus infinity to infinity. Or or yeah, or the empty set, right? Yeah. How would I get the empty set here? Oh, I'm sorry. He said the non-empty, and then of course, when any of these any of these we set up, it's it's understood that you throw in the empty set, right? Okay. So, does that does that make sense? That this would be a topology. I mean, if you think about, you know, let's just do some numbers. Just to, I mean, I don't want to be accused of putting no numbers in this lecture. Let's see here. So one, seven. seven. Oh my goodness. But it's just, it works in this case. There's no conflict. Yeah, so this is always just going to be what? Like 7, if 7 is equal to 7 is less than 1, then it's a different story. 7 is less than 1, it's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> Joe would be proud. Yeah. So it's got to be the min of 7 and 1. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Enough! Or the max. <laughs> Killing me. So, I, it's clear that the union is, is once more going to be something in there. Yeah. It, it either has a maximal element or it doesn't, in which case it, it's going to infinity, it's the whole thing. Right, so arbitrary unions of these are again of these form. And if I look at intersections of finitely many, finitely many things has to have a, we can pick a smallest element by the, what? Well-ordering well -ordering principle. principle. Yeah, and um, so there you go. Again, it'll be something of that form, where we just use the smallest element as the intersection of all of them. So yeah, that's a that's a topology. Now, is this one? Is this one okay? So there's a notion of topology which is finer and coarser. So if I have a given set X, right? So this kind of goes to your the heart of your question, Jess, is you're trying to understand, you're trying to. Our temptation psychologically like, is to always think that the topology is tied to the set itself. All right? But the topology of a set is some extra structure we're giving it. Mm -hmm. So a given point set could have many different topologies. And then we can compare those. So for example, we could have like tau1 is a subset um, of tau2. And then maybe that's a subset of, I mean, this is. Yeah. I think I'm starting to see that from the 3.3 .3 you just gave us pretty easily. Uh, Right, so, so my question to you is, on the reals, if we take x equal to the reals, we've got the metric topology, right? Mm -hmm. Is this, oh, and by the way, um, <clears throat> we say tau2 is finer than tau1, and we say Tau one is coarser. Coarse than tau two. Is 
if two topologies are finer um, than each other, then they're equal. Kind of like if A is less than B and B is less than A, then A is equal to B. Much the same idea. So my question is, is this topology finer or coarser than the metric topology on the real line? Is this, is this topology going to be finer or coarser than the metric topology? The usual, you know. It's coarser, right? Yes, I think so. Because, for example, this is an open set in the metric topology, but this is not an element of the, let me call this thing tau 3.3. Okay. <laughs> okay. Another example. The negative infinity A would be, an, or would be an element of the metric topology. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it's clear that um, that the 3.3 topology is a subset of the metric topology. Now, the metric topology is not the finest topology on the reals. Of course, you can take the inane discrete topology. There's an immediate example. But as we have said, well, my, Daniel, my, my Daniel would say it's b -b -b boring. Um, I was very proud of him when I heard him singing a b -b -b boring in the uh, Frozen sing along at Disney World. It, it gave me joy. Sweet um, second. What's that? <laughs> Wait, the, wait or bring Oh, you're right. There will be a second one. Oh, man. You're absolutely right. It is an inevitability, isn't it? I think we got I think you guys know the definition now I can get rid of that. Okay, so another example of a topology on the real line which is finer than the metric topology is this, the lower limit line. This is example 3.9 in Minetti. I seem to remember suffering through a homework of this in my topology course. It was, I did not enjoy it. All right, so here it is. Oh, stink. I need to first give you a definition. This is defined in terms of something called a basis. There's a notion of basis for topology. Um, T of topology on a set X, a subfamily. Um, Curly B, a subset of, of, of T <coughs> of the topology, is called a basis uh, of the topology of T if every open if every open set A element of T um, can be written as what? As a union of elements of B. So you, you guys can tell me um, You guys can tell me what um, what's an example of a basis 